Today's mission is fueled by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, viewers like you, the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television, and Delta Airlines. Because learning about geography is a great way for kids to learn about each other, no matter where they hang their hats. Delta Airlines, on top of the world. Deuces! No matter where I turn, Acme time that's on my trail. There must be some way I can slow them down. I know. With just one theft, the history of transportation will be changed forever. I think it's time to call in Baron Wasteland. Greetings, Carmen. My, you look radiant with evil today. Thanks. I'm sending you through the time port to Germany in the year 1876. There's something very special I want you to steal. Good. I hope it involves my two favorite things. Noise and pollution. You bet. This info beam will give you all the details. Now, get going. Time pilots, Baron Wasteland just stole something from the past. You've got 28 minutes to get it back, or history will change forever. Initiate chrono skimmer launch sequence. Boot up the chrono computer. Power up the engines! Extend the temporal sequencer! Now, get going! We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. Chrono skimmer, engines hot. Vile villains, evil plot. Our brain squadron leader will help us get beater and bring back the loot. because we've got a very big mission, but very little time. So let's meet today's time pilot, starting with Dana Gold. Dawn, Dana, nice to see you. And Crystal Dundas. Crystal, nice to have you in this squadron. All right. And Harry Kai. Come on, Harry. All right, buddy, good to see you. All right, time pilot, just so you know, we depend on fact fuel to power the chronic skimmer, and you guys will be generating that fuel with your answers. Now, each of you is equipped with 100 power points. Let's check in with the Chrono Skimmer engine crew. All right. They look ready and raring to go, so let's begin our pursuit of Baron Wasteland. Chief, what's our mission profile? Squadron, your time target is 1876. Destination, Germany. It's where the first practical model of a new type of engine was built by engineer Nikolaus Otto. The engine ignited a mixture of fuel and air under pressure in a closed chamber. The ignited fuel created an explosive force that could be used to propel a vehicle forward. Powerful and efficient, Otto's engine served as a model for the gasoline-powered cars, boats, and planes of today. Or so history told us till now. When Baron Wasteland went back in time and boosted Otto's engine. Thanks for the info, Chief. All right, pilots, for 10 power points, what did Baron Wasteland steal? Was it the steam engine, the nuclear reactor, or the internal combustion engine? Remembering the clues we just heard led to engines that are used today. Otto built the first practical model in Germany, 1876, and burns fuel and air in a closed chamber. All right, guys, those are the clues. Dana, what did you say? The international combustion engine. Okay, Crystal? The internal combustion engine. Very good, and Harry? 
the steam engine. All right, the correct answer is the internal combustion engine. <laughs> 10 points for Dana and Crystal. But that's great, guys, because now we know what we're looking for. And I'll tell you, if one of you today can retrieve that loot and capture Carmen San Diego, you'll win a complete multimedia computer system. Not bad, right? All right, let's go get it then. Engine room, let's warp to the time of the crime. <laughs> All right, pilots, we made it back in time to the year 1876. We're doing good. Oh, I spoke too soon. We've got trouble. That last warp drained our fact fuel. We need to refuel with a data boost. All right, time pilots, I'll read you a historical event. Your job, buzz in and tell me if it happened in 1876 or 1976. If you're right, you get five power points, and if you're wrong, you lose five, okay? Here we go. An earthquake in China kills more than 240,000 people. Yes, Crystal. 1876. Actually, that'd be 1976. The U.S. Centennial Exposition opens in Philadelphia. Going to Dana. 1976. Actually, that's 1876. President Grant opened the celebration honoring the USA's 100th birthday. He was thinking of the 200th, maybe. Washington, D.C. introduces its metro subway system. Going to Crystal. 1976. Yes, 1976. Central Park in New York City is completed. Going to Harry. 1876? Yes, 1876. Construction of the park took around 19 years to finish. Finally, Chinese Communist leader Mao Zedong dies. Going to Crystal. 1976. Yes, 1976. Very nice, guys. That's a great job, pilots, because you've replenished our fat fuel. And just a reminder, all our fact fuel is verified by Encyclopedia Britannica. Now let's continue our mission here in 1876. Right? Hey, guys, we're locked. That's the clue finder. It's locked onto someone in the future. Let's bring them on board and see if they can help us, all right? Hooray! 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 <laughs> My goodness, you seem very happy. I certainly am. Hooray! Care to guess why? Uh, well, maybe because you're strange. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm not in the least bit strange. Sorry. No, I'm like everybody else. You see, I'm the common man. Oh, I see. Common man. All right, let me guess. Uh, Hooray! Oh, Hooray! Okay. I see that you're happy. Let me guess why. Oh, you know why you're happy, probably? Your mustache tickles, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do it. not make fun of my mustache. Oh, sorry. I... President William Howard Taft has one just like it. <laughs> oh, very good. Uh, well, then tell me, really, friend, why are you so filled with glee? <laughs> I'll give you a clue. <laughs> it's because of something I'm in right now that was made by Mr. Henry Ford. Ah, you're wearing a Henry Ford tie. It looks very nice on you. I just... <laughs> Oh, no, oh, sorry, all right, okay, okay. Oh, silly me, you're wearing a Henry Fedora. <laughs> right, no, that's not it. Oh, I'm so embarrassed, this is real. Uh, yeah, of course, you're wearing Long John Henry's, right? It's I'd... the automobile! Oh, gosh, yeah, Henry Fordor. Right! <laughs> it's a Model T. Wow, very the nice. The first automobile, cheap enough uh, for the common people to afford. So close. I was, that was my next guess, really. You see, as recently as the 1890s, the automobile was so expensive that only the wealthy few could afford it. Mm. But then, Mr. Henry Ford designed the simple, basic Model T. Oh. Its parts are so easy. To, don't do that. Oh, sorry. So simple to put together that they can be assembled very quickly, several at a time, mm. by teams of people working in formations called assembly lines. Ah. This method keeps the price of making the Model T very low, which keeps the price of buying the Model T low enough for the common people to afford. Right. That's why everybody I know drives one. Wait a minute. Not everybody you know has the exact same car. Yes, we do. Hooray! 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 Ugh. Wow. Whew. Well, guys, I hope you heard those clues, because I had trouble seeing them, or I saw too many of them, actually. 
All right, so if Baron is back at the time when the Model T Ford was first mass produced, will we find him in 1903, 1913, or 1938? Remembering the clues we just heard, the Model T Ford, assembly line production keeps prices low, and U.S. President William Howard Taft. All right, guys, those are the clues. Lock on to an answer as soon as you can. Dana, what did you say, kiddo? 1903. All right, Crystal? 1913. And Harry? 1938. All right, quite a variety. Correct answer is 1913. <laughs> Ten points for Crystal. You know, pilots, Henry Ford made history by making cars affordable for the common man. But that history may soon be erased if we don't get back Odo's engine. Engine room, let's warp to 1913. <laughs> Going somewhere time takes? I don't think so. Ah! Pilots, we made it to 1913. The barren wasteland has zapped our fact fuel. It's time for another data boost. All right, time pilots, I'm going to read a statement. Your job, buzz in and tell me if that statement applies to Henry Ford or our 38th president, Gerald Ford. If you're right, you get five power points. If you're wrong, you lose five, okay? Here we go. When he was born, Abraham Lincoln was president. Going to Crystal. Henry Ford. Yes, Henry. He was born in 1863. Gerald was born 50 years later. Good answer. He was a football star at the University of Michigan. Going to Dana. Henry Ford. Actually, that was Gerald. Gerald Ford was. He ran for Senate in Michigan in 1918. Going to Harry. Henry Ford? Yes, Henry. Although he had support of President Wilson, he actually lost the race. He was originally named Leslie Lynch King, Jr. Going to Crystal. Gerald Ford? Yes, Gerald Ford. He was renamed for the stepfather who married his mother and adopted him. He pardoned Richard Nixon. Going to Harry. Henry Ford? Actually, Gerald Ford pardoned Nixon. But that's a great job, pilots, because you replenished our fact fuel. And that means we're ready for time travel from the year 1913. All right, guys, it's the clue finder again. What a lucky day. This time it's locked onto a report from the elephant guy. Watch the view screen. How's it going, elephant guy? Kevin, I'm running through 1956. Four years ago, a man named Kevin Wilson opened the first Holiday Inn. It offered road-weary travelers like me a clean, affordable place to stay. Well, his roadside motel chain arrived right on time because Americans are going car crazy. In fact, Congress just passed an act that will create a network of more than 45,000 miles of interstate highways. Eventually, these roads will carry one-fifth of the nation's auto traffic, and Holiday Inns will be found in more than 60 countries. Well, that's all I know, time pilots. Gotta run. Thanks a lot, elephant guy. He works really hard for us, doesn't he? We're glad, because we get his clues. All right, pilots, we know that Barren Wasteland is in 1956. Tell me the name of the act that Congress passes that year. Is it the American Rest Stop Bill, the Toll Booth Laws, or the Federal Aid Highway Act. Remembering the clues we just heard. Congress adopts interstate highway system, more than 45,000 miles of new roads to be built, and Holiday Inn motels popular. All right, guys, lock on to an answer as soon as you can. Dana, what did you say? The American Rest Stop Bill. OK, Crystal? The Federal Aid Highway Act. All right, and Harry? The Federal Aid Highway Act. OK, correct answer is the Federal Aid Highway Act. Ten points for Crystal and Harry. You know, pilots, the combination of cars, motels, and modern highways helped turn the U.S. into the nation of travelers that we are today. But we may be home for the holidays forever if we don't save history soon. So let's warp to 1956. <laughs> All right, pilots, we follow the Baron to the year 1956, but I think he knows we're on to him because he's about to do some globe hopping. So it's time for global pursuit. Grab your controls, watch the globe on your screen, and buzz in when you think you know the answer. If you're right, you get five power points. If you're wrong, you lose five, OK? Remember, we're in the 1950s. Here we go. He's raiding the country where the popular Volkswagen Beetles are manufactured. Going to Harry. Germany? Yes, Germany. 
He's beat it to the city where Jack Kerouac's novel, On the Road, is first published. Going again to Harry. New York City? Correct. Now Barron's scooted to the country where scooters are popular as a cheap form of transportation. Going to Dana. Italy? Yes, Italy. He's in the state where film legend James Dean is killed in an auto accident. Going to Harry. California? Correct. He's in the country where the car manufacturer Volvo offers seatbelts as an optional extra. Going to Crystal. Sweden? Correct, Sweden. Very nice, guys. Well, pilots, that's the good news. What I just found out, though, is that the Baron skipped out right before we got there. So the question still remains. Wait a second, guys. Someone's breaking into our frequency. Watch the view screen. Don't mess with the Baron, time tots, because I'm really cranky about a family-sized box on wheels called the minivan. Look, people in this time just love their minivans. Maybe it's because kitties can look out of those big minivan windows. Maybe it's because the seats can be removed for bikes, coolers, luggage, and all that nice family stuff. Maybe it's because minivans are so affordable, whatever the reason, I hate them! Not to hear on a zero the better war, but no force has never been him. And now that the president has cut income taxes by 25%, people may have more money to buy these energy-efficient egg crates. The minivan schminivan. Baron Schmarr is what I say. All right, pilots, tell me who was president during the time in which Baron Wasteland is now hiding. Is it Calvin Coolidge, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or Ronald Reagan? Remembering the clues we just heard. President known for big tax cut, minivans become popular, and affordable, energy-efficient transportation. All right, guys, those are the clues. Lock onto your answers as soon as we can. Very nice. Dana, what did you say? Ronald Reagan. All right, Crystal. Ronald Reagan. And Harry? Franklin D. Land Roosevelt. Okay, correct answer is Ronald Reagan. And points for Dana and Crystal. You know, President Reagan took office in 1981, just so you know. You know, pilots, you've heard a lot of good reasons why we need to get back Odo's engine, and now the fate of the minivan is in your hands. Well, so the stakes can't be higher, I guess. All right, squadron, we've got to make one final leap forward in time, and that means an ultimate data boost. <laughs> Pilots, in an ultimate data boost, each correct answer is worth 10 power points. But if you get it wrong, you lose 10, OK? All right, I'll give you a name. Your job, buzz in and tell me whether I've named a kind of car or a style of facial hair. All right, here goes. Goatee. Yes, Crystal. Facial hair. Correct, facial hair. Beetle. Again, Crystal. Car. Correct. Walrus. Join a Crystal. Facial hair. Yeah, good call. Yes, facial hair. Bentley. Going to Harry. Car. Correct. Big Brown Laverne. Going to Harry. Facial hair. Actually, that's a car. Built in Laverne, Minnesota from 1903 to 1918. Mutton chops. Going to Dana. Facial hair. Yes. Swallowtail. Again to Harry. Car. Actually, facial hair is a swallowtail. Auburn. Going to Crystal. Car. Correct. Finally, Duesenberg. Going to Dana. Car. Yes. Very nice, guys. Really, very, very nice. Let's see how well we did. Dana has 135 power points. Crystal has 200. And Harry has 120, which means that Dana and Crystal are moving on to the next phase of this mission. But Harry, you did a great job, pal. You made a good time pilot. And right now, the chief wants to say a few words to express our appreciation. Criminal schmeminal. Don't let Baron Wasteland get you down. You did outstanding work today. So, we'd like to reward you with our Acme Time Net Mission Pack. It includes a Deluxe Britannica World Atlas, this official Carmen T-shirt, the Chrono Skimmer cap with you-know-who's picture in front, a wear and time watch, plus the Carmen San Diego CD-ROM library and board games. You match wits against the crime queen herself through countless cases and thousands of clues. From Acme Time Net Command, we salute you. OK, squadron, we've sent Harry back to Time Net Command while we stay on board here and complete this mission. You guys ready? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, all right, Chief, we're ready. Time pilots, the history of transportation is at stake. Get to the United States in the early 1980s and clutch that engine. Kevin. You're in command. You got it, Chief. All right, time pilots, full speed ahead to the 1980s.
Look, the Baron's got Odo's engine in a cybersphere. Activate the loot tractor beam. We'll meet again, Time Tots, and sooner than you think. All right, we've gotten back Otto's internal combustion engine and have it safely on board. Congratulations, guys. You've completed mission objective number one. Plus, you're now one step closer to winning that amazing multimedia computer system. But before we continue chasing Baron Wasteland, we've got to return the loot to the year 1876. So let's check in with the Chief to get the flight plan. Chief? Time pilot. You must navigate the chrono skimmer through eight events from the history of transportation and automobiles, starting at the most recent event and finishing at the least recent event. The time pilot who does that goes on to chase Carmen and Baron Wasteland along the trail of time. Here are the events on your flight plan. The first U.S. auto race with more than two cars competing. Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run album is released. Harley-Davidson motorcycles are introduced. Road Rules premieres on MTV. The Model T Ford debuts. Nikolaus Otto builds the first practical model of an internal combustion engine. Matchbox cars are introduced. The Volkswagen Beetle is introduced. That's your briefing time, pilots. Good luck on your journey. All right, Crystal, you had the higher score. You have the choice of going first or second. Oh, first. All right, in that case, Crystal, I want you to navigate this chrono skimmer back through time from the most recent event to the least recent event, starting by picking the most recent event on the board. You may begin. Road Rules premieres on MTV. Correct. You've gotten us to 1995. Keep going. Um, spring Team's Born to Run release. Correct. You've steered us to 1975. Pick the next most recent event. Matchbox cars are introduced. Yes, 1953. Keep going. The first Harley Davidson motorcycles. Okay, back to Dana. Road Rules premieres on MTV. Yes, 1995. Spring Team's Born to Run release. Correct, 1975. Matchbox car is introduced. Yes, 1953. Volkswagen Beetle introduced. Yes, 1938. The Model T4 debuts. Correct, you've gotten us to 1908. Keep going. First U.S. auto race. Okay, back to Crystal. Road Rules premieres on MTV. Yes, 1995. Spring Teams Born to Run was released. Yes, 1975. Max Bars Cars introduced. Correct, 1953. Volkswagen Beetle introduced. Yes, 1938. The Model T4 debuts. Correct, 1908. Um, first Harley Davidson motorcycles. Yes, you've gotten us to 1903. Keep going. First U.S. auto race. Correct, 1895. Auto built decision. Yes, Crystal, you've saved history. Congratulations. Look at that big smile. And you, Dana, did a great job. Another big smile. Two big smiles. Look at that. Well, you should be happy because we did a great job today. We've got more to do, though, so keep smiling. You and I are going to move on in just a minute. And Dana, you have another mission from the Chief, and she's here to tell you all about it. You've done some top-notch navigation today, and you always need to be ready for future missions. So. We're equipping you with a complete time net mission pack and this terrific portable CD player featuring a polycarbonate body, a MASH 1-bit DA conversion system, 24-track oh, random access programming. Oh, plus, it's mighty smooth and pretty. Job well done, time pilot. All right, Crystal, you navigated us back to 1876 and returned the internal combustion engine. Right now, Dana is piloting the chrono skimmer back to the present, but Crystal, Carmen, and Baron Wasteland are still out there, so we gotta track them down, okay? All right. So it's time for us to exit the chrono skimmer and head for the trail of time. Chief, is that a go? Kevin, I'm initiating the transportal exit sequence. Prepare to leave the chrono skimmer. We're ready, Chief. Look out, Carmen, we're on our way. Track Carmen through six portals by answering her questions. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Ready, set, go, Crystal, go. Follow the engine crew to the first portal. It's 1876. Who builds the first practical internal combustion engine, Porsche or Auto? Auto. 
All right, way to go. Follow the crew to the second portal, Crystal. It's 1911, what race is held for the first time, the Indy 500 or the Daytona 500? The Indy 500. Yes, you've captured Baron Wasteland. Congratulations. It's 1914, what is erected in Detroit, the first traffic light or the first stop sign? The first traffic light. All right, pull the rope to open the gate. Keep pulling, Crystal. Go, go, go. You're almost there. Keep pulling, keep pulling. That gate's going to open. Keep pulling. All right, you're halfway there. You've got 36 seconds left. It's 1939, what is installed in cars for the first time, seat belts or air conditioning? Air conditioning. Yes. Two more to go. You've got 23 seconds left. Keep up the good work, Crystal. It's 1982. Who starts manufacturing cars in the US? Honda or Toyota? Toyota. All right, crank the crank. Right there, crank it. Just turn it. There you go. It's almost there. Go, go, go. Keep spinning. Keep spinning. That gate's going to open any moment now. All right. One more to go. It's <laughs> Crystal, you ran out of time, and Carmen has escaped again. But you did capture Baron Wasteland. That's tough to do, and you did it. And you returned the loot to its proper place in history. So now the Chief has got something to say to you. Chief, time travel is not for the faint of heart. And you showed great courage and skill chasing Carmen today. To reward your fine work, you'll receive a full 32-volume set of Encyclopedia Britannica. It's the perfect tool to brief yourself on any future mission. Plus, this CD radio dual cassette system will let you listen to great tunes while you do it. Congratulations. You're now a head navigator. Thanks, Chief. Crystal, you had a tough time, but you did great. You make an excellent time pilot. But now we've all got to go back to the present. And remember, at Acme TimeNet, history is our job. The future is yours. We're on the case and we're chasing her through history. Throttle open, thrusters on. Chrono skimmer gets us strong. Pack extra socks and we'll all beat the clock from the stone age to middle age to space age and back. Nero's fiddle, Lincoln's beard, Newton's apple, disappeared, the dynasty from the Ming dynasty and the Nina the Ninja the Sensei. All historical information has been verified by Encyclopedia Britannica and was accurate as of the date this program was recorded. Her crime and solve this